Good evening, everybody. This is your favorite aspiring classicist here, a wondering author, reminding you that we're all the authors of our own lives. As always, my message remains the same. Spend less, live more, earn your freedom with frugality. <clears throat> and today, we're going to go over the nature of virtue, <clears throat> which is the last chapter of book six of chapter, uh, chapter 13 of book six of um, Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. Remember yesterday, we talked about why we need these, uh, the intellectual virtues, and now he's going to go over the nature of virtue, not just intellectual, but, but virtue as a whole. And he opens up the chapter by saying, <clears throat> We have therefore also to reconsider the nature of virtue. The fact is, the case of virtue is closely analogous to that of prudence in relation to cleverness. Remember, prudence resembles cleverness, meaning that you kind of can use cleverness to be a prudent person, but prudence is like a the moral quality of goodness. It has a moral quality of goodness inside of it. It's practical, or phronesis is, is the actual term in the original Greek. <laughs> prudence and cleverness are not the same, but they are similar. And natural virtue is related in the same way to virtue in the true sense. All are agreed that the various moral qualities, in a sense, are bestowed by nature. We are just and capable of temperance and brave and possessed of the other virtues from the moment of our birth. So everybody is born with the capacity to be virtuous. But nevertheless, we expect to find that true goodness is something different and that the virtues in the true sense come to belong to us in another way. For even children and wild animals possess the natural dispositions meaning the natural dispositions of courage, justice, temperance. Yet, without intelligence, these may manifestly be harmful. So if you don't know what you're doing, you might hurt yourself by being virtuous. Just as a man of powerful frame who has lost his sight meets with heavy falls when he moves about, so it also happens in the moral sphere. Whereas if a man of good natural disposition acquires intelligence, then he excels in conduct, and the disposition which previously only resembled virtue will now be virtue in the true sense. So, if you have a man that's got a good natural disposition, he's got, he possesses the natural virtues, the ones that we're born with, and then he acquires intelligence, he will do well in life. And he will, in that case, be a possessor of true virtue. Hence, just as with the faculty of forming opinions, there are two qualities, cleverness and prudence, so also in the moral part of the soul there are two qualities, natural virtue and true virtue. And true virtue cannot exist without prudence. <clears throat> Hence, some people maintain that all the virtues are some forms of prudence, or are forms of prudence, and Socrates' line of inquiry was right in one way, though wrong in another. He was mistaken in thinking that all virtues are forms of prudence, but right in saying that they cannot exist without prudence. A proof of this is that everyone, even of the present day, in defining virtue, adds that it is a disposition determined by the right principle. And the right principle is the principle determined by prudence. So if you've watched several of these videos so far, Aristotle always talks about right principle, which is just like knowing what's right or what's good and we develop that capacity by developing prudence which is practical wisdom and in order to develop that remember we have to have experience in life that's why young men might be able to be mathematicians but they can't be natural philosophers because they don't have the at least according to Aristotle because they don't have the experience this formula however requires a slight modification Virtue is not merely a disposition conforming to right principle, but one cooperating with right principle. And prudence is right principle in matters of conduct. So, let me repeat that. Prudence is right principle in matters of conduct. It literally is right principle in matters of conduct. Socrates then thought that the virtues are principles, for he said that they are all of them forms of knowledge. We, on the other hand, meaning Aristotle, say that the virtues cooperate with principle. These considerations therefore show that it is not possible to be good in the true sense without prudence, nor to be prudent without moral virtue. 
It is therefore clear that even if prudence had no bearing on conduct, it would still be needed, because it is the virtue of that part of the intellect to which it belongs. And also, that our choice of actions will not be right without prudence, any more than without moral virtue, since while moral virtue enables us to achieve the end, prudence makes us adopt the right means to the end. So, prudence belongs to its own special part of the suke, which is translated either as psyche or soul into English. And it's what makes us choose the right way to reach our goals. Instead of cheating, we're going to study. Instead of, you know, trying to, um, really, instead of, instead of cheating in anything, you're going to do it the right way. If, instead of trying to cut across the track while you're running a marathon, you're going to actually run the whole thing. And to do that, you're going to have to train. That's what a prudent person would do. But nevertheless, it is not really the case that prudence is an authority over wisdom, or over the higher part of the intellect, any more than medical science is an authority over health. Medical science does not control health, but studies how to procure it. <laughs> That's a good one again. I think some people nowadays might need to hear that. Medical science does not control health, but studies how to procure it. Hence it issues orders in the interests of health, but not to health. And again, one might as well say that political science governs the gods because it gives orders about everything in the state. And that's the end of that chapter. Which, that, that tells us why, why do we need prudence? Well, it's what lets us know how to be a good person. How to be good whenever we're trying to achieve our goals. Um, and how do we develop prudence? Through experience and by having a good natural disposition, which Aristotle says everyone has or everyone is born with. Um, and then book seven, when we get to it tomorrow, it goes over vice, so what not to do, and um, different aspects of that. Anyways, this is your favorite aspiring classicist here, a wandering author, reminding you that we're all the authors of our own lives. What are y'all doing in order to inspire, uplift, and empower your local community today? Because this world isn't changing unless we all do our part, and you can count on me to do mine daily. Until next time, I love y'all.